everyone, this is Phyrexian Walker here with the 3DH format from Praetor Gaming. And just going to do a quick video here to help some of you who are interested in getting to the 3DH format, but say, this spreadsheet, I'm not really good with spreadsheets. I don't really get spreadsheets. I'm not used to using it. It's very different than the normal deck builder I'm used to using. And just, you know, give some tips and pointers on ways to you guys spreadsheet. So the first thing is we're here in 3DH rules and info on the Praetor Gaming Discord. Um, and here's your current season spreadsheet. Um, season 10.5. Um, the seasons for 3DH, um, as it says right up here, run two weeks from the most standard set release until two weeks um, after the next standard set release. So from one standard set to the other set. Um, the 0.5 is because we sometimes make an exception for exceptional commander product and we just had the commander legends release and a lot of people wanted to play the commander legends uh commanders uh, in 3dh so we pulled data and made a season 10.5 didn't change any of the prices for any of the cards that were already legal for season 10 but just added the new commander legends cards that were legal to the spreadsheet so um every now and again we'll do that but usually seasons run from that two weeks before one standard set or after one standard set to two weeks after the next um, so if we click here, it will open up the spreadsheet. And as you may notice, this is a view only spreadsheet. That means that you cannot, you see, can't make edits to it, can't do anything to it, can't change it. That is because the spreadsheet needs to be that way because if everybody could edit it, then, you know, it just changes every time. And then any work you've done gets overwritten by somebody else's. So we have to set it up that way. So nobody messes up the spreadsheet. Uh, and you see here, this is the little folder for all the card prices. That's the main thing we're concerned about people messing up. Um, but if we go file and make a copy, that's what we want to do. We want to make a copy of this, and then we're just going to call it something. We can call it Phyrexian X or something like that, um, which is not what I actually call mine. As you see over here, I call it Eternal 3DH Dex. So I started calling it. Uh, it looks like about seven iterations, seven, eight iterations ago. Um, but you get the spreadsheet pulled up, and now you can edit it, and you can say, like, okay, well, I think maybe um, maybe I want to play a nice mono-white commander. Maybe I want to see about Shram. Senior Edificer. Have I spelled that right? If you don't spell it right, it won't come up. Okay, so, hey, I want to play Shram Senior and Fisher, but oh, wow, Shram is $1.94 right now on the spreadsheet. Um, So I'd have to really keep the rest of my budget down because I only have, see, we even have up here where it says, yeah, you spent $1.94 on just your commander, and you only have $1.06 left. So that means you'd have to fit everything else in the deck within that $1.06 budget. Um, You also see here where we have average CMC, and then some other things we're going to talk about a little bit more in a second. But basically, that's what you do um, if you're building a deck from scratch. You just take it in there, plug in cards, and then you're like, okay, I want bone saw because that's a good cheap equipment that I can put on SRAM and you know draw cards with SRAM. Maybe I want spider silk net. I mean, maybe um, you can find a bunch of uh, cheap zero cost equipment that still lets you do the SRAM things. But um, yeah, spending a dollar ninety four cent of your budget on a commander is definitely rough. Not something I recommend. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to mine and you can tell Seth got a little bit crazy with the uh, color scheme. So you can change the color scheme um, if uh, if it's a little bit too bright for you. I mean, this one kind of, at least it's too bright for me. It hurts Frexen's eyes. Frexen has to have nice muted colors. Um, but you can see right here, this is my Grand Warlord Rado deck and you can see down below, these are actually all of my decks for uh, season 10.5 as of right now. But this is a Grand Word of Rada deck that I built as a stipulation for stream. We did a randomizer and I got Grand Lord Lord Rada and built the deck from there. Um, so you can see, you can sort by the categories. So we have Draw Tutor, Ramp, Land, Miscellaneous, Removal, Wrath, and Combo I think is the last one that's on there. I don't have any combos in this particular deck, so I took off combos and I used it for other stuff. I used tokens. And then my three custom categories I changed to pump, haste, and there's an extra damage. You can change any or all of these to whatever you want to, um, but after you have them, what you can do is you can go through and 
click on the little arrow and you can change this. You could say this is a land. Obviously it's not a land. Obviously it is, you know, card draw card advantage of a sort. Um, so draw tutor. And then you can look over here and see how many you have from each category. So um, kind of a neat, useful tool for trimming down your deck when you're like, oh crap, I have 27 ramp effects in my deck already. I don't need 27 ramp effects. Maybe I should cut about, you know, 15 to 17 of those and get narrowed down. Um, so that's a good resource to have. Uh, again, average CMC is down here. We do have a place for compa uh, companions if you want to play a companion. Um, that as well. That's the place in your spreadsheet. You have to know that you only get to do 98 other. Or sorry, no. You can also put a, a partners, same thing, but then you have to realize in this part, you only get to do 98 other cards. You can use a companion for either companion or partner, or you can put the partner over here. It doesn't really matter where you put your partner, as long as it's on there. But yeah, one other useful thing I want to show is some of the uh, sorting utility. The first thing you want to do is highlight your entire list. Well, I highlight the entire list down to basic lands because I like my basic lands to stay at the bottom. Um, and then you have several sort features you can use. So you can go sort range. And our columns we're interested in are columns D, E, F, G, and H. Um, so first sort you can do is column D, and that will just sort by card name. And you can do it alphabetically. And so now all your cards are alphabetically. This can help if you want to check to see, oh, have I already included a certain card in the deck? Um, as you're building and say, hey, I've already got a Sprout Swarm. I don't need to do two Sprout Swarms. So it can help you avoid like doubling up on cards and stuff like that as you're building the deck. That's kind of why I sort by card name. Second sort I would suggest is doing column E and I do it in reverse order. I want to do it in descending because what that does is it puts your highest cost cards at the top. So you can see my highest cost card is Eldrazi Monument, then Doubling Season, then Biogenic Ooze, Heroic Intervention, so on and so forth down the list. Um, so that shows you where you're spending most of your money. So if you happen to be particularly, that's in the case where you're over budget, then you can look and say, okay, these are my high price cards. What can I cut? What can I do to get it down under that three tick budget? So what can I do? Um, the next sort would just be sorting by column F. Um, and that's just, if you do categories, that's useful because then it groups all these things like so you can see all your draw tutor effects. And like I said, if you're in that situation where you have, you know, 17 draw tutor effects and you really think you only need nine or 10, you go in there and you cut down on the draw tutor effects. Um, very rarely I'll sort by card type, but I do sort by CMC a lot. And again, I do CMC um, generally. I'll do CMC in reverse because a lot of times you want to look at your top end and make sure you aren't running too many like top end cards. You can also sort and say, hey, I've got a bunch of five drops in my deck. Maybe I want to cut a five drop. You know, maybe I have one too many five drops. I need to just get rid of some, or maybe I have five too many five drops. I need to get rid of five of them. But sorting by CMC can help a lot with uh, smoothing out the curve and just making sure the deck uh, flows well. Because you don't want like no two drops and a bunch of five drops in your deck because then your deck's just not going to play out very well most of the time. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and sort. And usually the last sort I do is I do sort it by CMC that way, and then I sort by the column. And I have them in order by CMC in their particular categories. That's what I do. Just You don't have to do that at the end, but it makes it look nice. That's kind of a little bit of the spreadsheet utility. And if you have any more questions or anything else, you can certainly hit me up on the Discord. Um, you can send me a DM to FrexinWalker03, or you can just at Frexin03 um, in the uh, 3DH room. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you.